ITC3 Innovation Summit to talk a little bit with uh, Emmanuel Soze about how Airbus's Space and Defense Group is uh, really approaching innovation in the satellite space. So, Emmanuel, I know you're due on stage here in a bit to discuss some of these issues. Can you give us a bit of a preview of what you're going to be talking about? Yes, absolutely. Um, the uh, satellite communications industry is undergoing a major change due to various innovations ongoing right now. It used to be an industry with a few players, uh, lots of buyers to entry. What we observe now is big change with new players, new technologies, and we see our customers uh, hesitating to purchase satellites now, looking at what's going to happen in the coming uh, months and years. Uh, this year, 2017, has been pretty rough for the industry, for the satellite manufacturers and equipment manufacturers. But we have lots of uh, very interesting signs of innovation coming. Uh, among them, first, the arrival of Leo Constellation. Uh, so Airbus, we are a partner of OneWeb for massive uh, broadband connectivity from space. Uh, but we have other players coming, uh, like SpaceX, for example, also providing massive uh, broadband connectivity from space. We have new technology on the ground segment. Um, you see uh, uh, flat panel antennas uh, manufacturer. Mostly two startups are famous, like Kaimeta, Phaser, and they will uh, open up new markets for satellite connectivity thanks to this technology. We see also lots of startups coming in the field of uh, Internet of Things, machine-to-machine -machine connectivity from space. Uh, obviously, the need for spectrum is less, so there is more room for innovation here, where for broadband you need a lot of spectrum, and um, business-wise you can only have a few competitors in, in, in that field. Yeah, you mentioned Phaser. This is an interesting company uh, with uh, you know really big ideas for bridging the digital divide and connecting the three and a half billion some odd people that don't have reliable access to broadband. Can you give us a little bit more insight into really what the long view is of harnessing these constellation of satellites to deliver broadband access in places that previously have not been able to access that? I think there are uh, different examples. And if you look at our customers, we are mostly a satellite manufacturer. We don't do services uh, except for governments. Um, but we see really uh, uh, a lot of thinking of looking after new markets. Uh, and definitely, if you have these flat panel antennas, you can go in places where uh, you were not usually present as a, uh, I would say, if we talk about us as a satellite, uh, uh, satellite communications industry. Uh, this could be uh, trains, uh, aircraft, and we as Airbus, we are very much interested in uh, the kind of technology you can put in aircraft. Um, but this may be later also uh, boats, well, why not cars, connected cars. Yeah, and you, you mentioned IoT, so connected car, that's to some extent an IoT device, but help us understand a little bit more about the role of SAT-based communications in supporting just the massive scale of the Internet of Things. We see these projections of 20 million, 50 million devices over the next few years. They need to get capacity from somewhere, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, Personally, I don't believe there will be one single technology that will uh, provide all the answer. We probably need uh, the best networks to be the network we will be able to aggregate different technologies ongoing. Um, so we have the ZigFox, the LoRa uh, of the world, developing their networks. We think satellite can play a role, definitely, uh, because it's ubiquitous, it's a global coverage. And now we have technologies where you can have really uh, both small satellites uh, managing uh, these uh, messaging services from space, and we may have devices on the ground which are quite small too. So that's one area where uh, the laws of physics and uh, the, uh, what we can develop in terms of uh, equipment uh, makes it very uh, affordable compared to uh, what it used to be even a few years ago. At the same time, we also have uh, existing players uh, in geo-orbit, like in Marsat, and we are manufacturing the next generation of L-band satellites for Inmarsat. We can still provide excellent IoT services from Geo. So we'll have a healthy competition between these new entrants, mostly new, and existing player on Geo. Yeah, and, and as the price of a satellite equipment goes down and that barrier to entry into the market decreases, what are the type of disruption are, are you potentially aware of that, that might uh, impact the airway Airbus approaches its long-term business plans? Um, so, uh, one issue uh, our customers have had is they purchase a satellite, they get it, uh, they can start getting revenues on, in orbit three years later. 
And then we have about for 15 years, we have an asset which is designed for a specific orbital location. Uh, probably one of the, the best way to, to move forward in the future is to have fully flexible satellites. And we are working on that. We have one spacecraft in, uh, uh, in preparation that will be launched, a demonstrator of this full flexible. So a full flexible satellite is, a, in financial terms, it's a liquid asset. So you put it, you launch it for, because you have a business in one given position and you may want to be in one orbital location looking at North America or Europe or wherever. And suddenly, after a few years, if this doesn't work, you can just move to another position and uh, adapt your satellite to your new uh, business case. Emmanuel, I appreciate you taking a few moments to share your perspective. My pleasure. I look forward to your talk later today. Thank you very much.